Hello. This presentation is entitled Supporting Student and Staff Mental Health, a Different Perspective on Long Haul COVID-19, and is presented by Angela Luce, a PhD candidate at the University of Manitoba. After sharing a bit about myself, I will provide an explanation of the importance of the topic of mental health in schools and how it has been affected by the ongoing stressors of COVID-19. I will also explain the various groups of stakeholders affected by this issue and outline several practical strategies to support them as we head into this third year affected by the global pandemic. My name is Angela Luce and I'm a PhD candidate in inclusive education at the University of Manitoba. I've been in education for almost 35 years and have been an elementary school principal for the last 11 years. Part of my focus as a school leader has been on creating a welcoming and safe school environment, which has been even more challenging to achieve during the COVID-19 pandemic. The mental health of many people has been negatively affected by the isolation and cumulative stressors of COVID-19. The disruption of education has impacted the mental health of students, parents and staff. Abrupt changes to regular routines and anxiety over maintaining normal levels of learning have resulted in increased mental health struggles and addictions concerns in all key stakeholders in schools. Educators needed to change everything about the way they planned and delivered curricula and students and parents scrambled to learn to use new technology and worried about gaps in learning and the lack of support for academics and social emotional needs without the structure of the school day. A study conducted by the local researchers at Brandon University confirmed that the mental health of school leaders, parents who are homeschooling their children, students, and all levels of school staff have been negatively affected by COVID-19. All participants in this study advocated for increased focus and resources to support mental health and well-being. As COVID-19 continues into the fourth wave, its negative effects on the mental health of educators and students become more profound. One specific reason for the prolonged negative effects of the pandemic is ambiguous loss, the type of grief caused by an event that happens without closure or without a clear explanation or understanding. Ambiguous loss is comparable to the shutting off of a tap. No drips or trickles, just gone. When school abruptly shut down, students, staff and the entire school community had to quickly change and adapt without the proper time to prepare. It became abundantly clear that the school system is an extremely important source of social emotional health for all stakeholders. Especially at the beginning of the pandemic, communication was often limited or cut off completely and the normally open, welcoming schools became empty, with teachers and students missing the connections of in-person learning. The loss of this reliable support system has resulted in a shared grief that has been repeated over the last year and a half and will continue into this school year as well. One way to address the ongoing mental health concerns for all school stakeholders is to focus on building and maintaining strong relationships. Especially in times of crisis and change, students can feel safer, more cared for, and connected to their teachers even during remote learning if relationship building is prioritized. Strong teacher-student relationships also help to mitigate the adverse effects of trauma including trauma created by a global pandemic. School leaders have the added responsibility of maintaining positive, supportive relationships with staff in addition to other stakeholder groups. Supporting each other in meeting the increasing needs of others has been crucial during this difficult time. Some of the strategies that I used over the last year and a half and continue to encourage as this year begins are individual messages and check-ins through notes and phone calls, being available for support and as a listening ear for all members of the school community and supporting staff in maintaining connections to families and to each other. Improving staff relationships through a team support structure is a renewed focus for this school year. Because of the immediacy of dealing with new teaching assignments mid-year and simply managing the ever-changing COVID protocols, collaborative teacher teams took a back seat last year this too caused teachers to feel more isolated as did the requirements to maintain class cohorts and limit interactions between classes and grades. Developing collective efficacy, a shared belief that we can effectively teach all of our students is a renewed focus for this school year. It is hoped that by meeting together again this year to set goals, share challenges and successes and identify resources, teachers will be able to have a stronger sense of agency over the ongoing pandemic crisis. 
We are stronger together and can only continue to persevere if we support each other. Communication is another specific essential strategy to combat the negative effects of COVID-19. A calm, encouraging voice that shares important information in a timely, regular way will help to alleviate the uncertainty that comes from the ongoing changes brought about by the pandemic. This applies to teachers regularly communicating with students and families, to school leaders with their staff and school communities, and to school division employees, to school leaders. As students and teachers transition back to in-person everyday learning, there are some specific ways that school leaders and divisional administrators can support mental health and well-being. Asking what people need, going slowly in terms of expectations, and nurturing the adults who nurture the children are important steps to ensure a smooth transition. Again, this advice applies to the staff and to students in the school. Taking the time needed to transition back into school will be an ongoing need as we continue to experience abrupt changes caused by the pandemic. The province of Manitoba has prioritized mental health and well-being in their back-to-school reopening plans. The resources listed here are for all stakeholders, including students, families, and staff. The province of Manitoba believes that the mental health and well-being of students, educators, and school staff is an important priority and imperative as COVID-19 has affected the mental health and well-being of Manitoba students, educators, and school staff. As a result, they have recently earmarked more than $1 million for mental health initiatives in the K-12 system, including a collaborative project with the Canadian Mental Health Association. Other specific supports that the province has provided for mental health include training from the North American Centre for Threat Assessment and Trauma Response, professional development on trauma-informed schools and safe talk, and there is also counselling available to staff through the Employee Assistance Program and for students at the school level. In addition to the mental health guidelines, there are also provincial documents provided to support students with special needs specifically. These are intended to be used in conjunction with other provincial guidance and protocols related to school reopening. All student-specific plans need to be reviewed more regularly in order to adjust supports whether students are in class or learning remotely. In conclusion, the effects of the ongoing pandemic continue to negatively impact the mental health and well-being of our school communities. It may also be true, however, that there is now more of a shared empathy and concern by all stakeholders about the importance of school to mental health and well-being. We are in this for the long haul and need to acknowledge the need for ongoing support for our students, staff, and school communities in terms of mental health. The key things to remember as we move into year three and wave four are that schools play a pivotal role in supporting mental well-being and that we need to be empathetic to those we serve and to each other. Building and maintaining strong relationships, prioritizing teams to support teacher well-being, and communicating calmly and regularly are all key components of mental health support systems for staff and students. School leaders can't do this work alone, however. We too need ongoing support of school divisions and provincial resources to support the positive mental health of school communities. Thank you for your attention. I am available for questions or comments through any of the contact information on this slide via LinkedIn, Twitter, email, or through phone calls. I would welcome your input and suggestions and resources to help me serve my school community and supporting their mental health and well-being.